The meeting was posted for 5.30, so the time is now 5.51 p.m. We will now call this special public meeting of the Board of Trustees of Humble Independent School District to order. Moving to our first item of business, closed session. A closed session of the, uh, sorry. A closed session of the board will now be held in the matters contained in the notice for this meeting. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such a uh, closed session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote will be made upon reconvening of this public meeting in open session. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is now 5.51 p.m. The time is now 7.11 p.m. We will now reconvene into, into opening session. Thank you for joining us tonight. A reminder that the meetings of the board are open to the public, but are not meetings of the public. The Humble ISD Board of Trustees meet monthly in regular meeting to receive reports from staff, take action from recommendations of the superintendent. The board receives uh, the agenda items and all supporting documentation several days in advance of the regular meetings, which allows us to ask and receive answers to many of our questions in advance of the regular meeting. Therefore, lengthy discussions are not always necessary on every agenda item. Item. But, but as a board, we do have appropriate knowledge and preparation for responses regarding the content of the meeting. There are students and other guests present. To, to maintain decorum, respectful behavior is expected. Disruptive behavior and or comments will not be allowed. And with that, our first item is our Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask everybody to stand for the pledge. Mr. Grabowski, would you lead us? Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Okay. Moving on to our next agenda item, commendations and recognitions. Dr. Brown, can you please in introduce tonight's inspiring moments? Thank you, Madam President, would be glad to do. As part of what makes Humble ISD special is that students have opportunities to participate in a variety of activities. In tonight's inspiring moment, we learn about one of those opportunities. And I gotta tell you, when I first read this, listen to this, because it made me pause, like, where are we going with this? Listen, where students gather around a fire and push each other. And I wasn't sure where are we going with that, but it's to be the best in one of the more competitive industries in Texas. And I think you're really gonna enjoy this. Students across Humble ISD have a vast array of opportunities when it comes to hands-on learning experiences outside the traditional classroom. Life lessons are taught through athletics, art, theater, dance, and FFA. A barbering academy, an EMT certification program, and a competition barbecue team? Well, as big as football is in the Lone Star State, barbecue may take a close second. Texas is known for the food, so I guess barbecue is higher than football. Football is like once a year, barbecue is all year round. In 2018, the High School Barbecue League was started to create a platform for high schoolers to put their barbecue skills to the test across the state of Texas. In the fall of 2023, Summer Creek High School started a new barbecue team and joined the league under the guidance of Samantha Guajardo. In my interview with Dr. Manny and the whole like panel that decided to hire me, their last statement was like, do you have any questions for us? And one of those was, well, what are your thoughts about starting a barbecue team? Mr. Segura said, I'm all for it. And so did Dr. Manny. The students competed in brisket, ribs, chicken, beans, and dessert categories throughout the 2023-2024 season. Summer Creek traveled to multiple competitions throughout the year 
and was one of 93 teams to qualify for the 2024 Texas High School Barbecue State Championships in Round Rock, Texas. Morning, we are 644. Where are we going, guys? Round Rock, Texas. For what? State competition. Our very first competition where we advanced and got the invitation to state. If you don't get an invitation to state, you really aren't recognized. We all had to get up early in the morning, and then other than that, it was, we all got through it. Because at the end of the day, even though you're tired, you still had fun, you had friends to be with, you were able to turn in a product, and you were able to place good. Out of the 93 teams that competed at the state competition, the HTX Dog Pound team finished 14th in ribs, 18th in brisket, and 30th in chicken. Typically, restaurants smoke brisket for around 10 to 12 hours, but in a barbecue competition, time is limited. I put a binder on and then all my seasonings and then put it on for 7 hours, let it rest for an hour, turn it in. Through all the traveling, hours of tending fire, and cooking at competitions, the HTX Dog Pound became more than just a team. I'm not a mom yet, but if this is what a mom would feel like, then super proud. You know, like these are my kids. I, I always refer them to my kids. Whenever we go out somewhere, it's Miss G party at seven. What more can you ask for? Being with a good group of people, I mean, my best friends at school, cooking around a fire. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, it's just a blast. So, what's next for the HTX Dog Pound team? Next year, I hope to expand into two teams. I hope that more opportunities in, in regard to like networking, that we could do more for the community, and just hope that we continue to build leaders, continue to build um, talented students too, and, and just give them the opportunity that not a lot of schools can, can offer these kids. Well, that does it for this month's inspiring moment. Anyone else hungry now? Well, I talked about football. I think I will find that tailgate when Summer Creek is playing. That looked pretty good. And so to be part of the Summer Creek barbecue team, students must be registered in an FFA class and then try out for the team. Uh, they have a strong, solid senior class coming back, and everybody's looking forward to the 24-25 school year. Now then, uh, I want to announce that at this time, I would like to call Humble ISD Police Chief Solomon Cook to the podium for an important announcement. Good evening, everyone. I stand before you tonight to address recent safety measures implemented at our public school board meetings. The safety and security of all attending are the utmost importance to us. Across the nation, a wide variety of events, we have seen concerned incidents. To ensure a safe environment here for everyone, we have introduced enhanced safety precautions. You may have noticed a roped in area in the front of the room. We are going to reserve this portion of the room for district recognition that occurs during the board meeting. We will ask people to not to enter this secure area. If you have something in your, uh, to hand to the board members, please give it to our public communication staff members who are always sitting at the front right side of the room and they were distributed to the trustees. That's those great ladies right over there, okay? Additionally, we will have officers stationed in the front of the room, as well as the back of the room, like before. We will continue to have additional officers throughout the property, which has always been our procedure for the years past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Cook. The next item is public comment. The board encourages comments from citizens of the district or from district employees. Anyone wishing to speak either as an individual or as a representative of a group may do so. The, uh, do so following the procedure outlined in the agenda. The board asks that comments pertain to public education issues and be no longer than three minutes. Remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda for tonight's meeting. 
If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board will defer discussion until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by students or their parents, by employees, and by citizens may be heard in accordance with board policies. Each of these processes provides that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as, as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policies on public participation in meetings and filing complaints are available on the Humble ISD website. I'm going to invite the first four speakers to come forward. And uh, the first speaker, please come to the podium. The other three, please be seated in that front row. Tracy Clemens, Scott Ford, Larissa Powell, and Deanie Allen. Ms. Clemens. Mr. Ford. Hello, Scott Ford, teacher. Um, first of all, what a crazy two and a half weeks this has been. Um, <laughs> glad that we're all here. We all survived it. Um, how many people bought generators? I'm kind of curious. Um, before I get into what I want to talk about, uh, I do want to thank you guys for having the committees on the agenda. I think that would be a great benefit to the district as you'll be pulling subject matter experts from pretty much all walks, whether they are faculty, staff, community members. So I, I applaud you guys on doing that. I think that'd be a great idea. Um, but I did want to talk about the IT certification program and what we've got accomplished and where we're going to go. So we finished off this last school year with about 30 students getting a CompTIA certification. This was a history uh, for this district. So that was actually amazing. We had students from every high school campus and a middle school campus get certified. Uh, this coming year, the Principles of IT course is being offered on a Tassie High School campus. I'll be teaching that as well as Humble High School campus. Um, still unsure about one other campus that's teaching it. So we could have up to, I don't know, 30 to 50 kids getting certified in that as well as the computer maintenance program where we are setting records, attendance on that one. Um, I'm happy to say when I took over this program, I had 10 students in the computer maintenance program total. This coming year, I've got over 30 students enrolled uh, from Summer Creek, Humble High School, and of course, Atassee to High School. So this is kind of our old, old numbers where we have a full classroom. I'm also excited about the fact that we now have a cybersecurity program. Uh, if you follow any of the news, especially what just happened <laughs> recently, uh, cybersecurity is a field that there will never be a shortage of need and help for, as well as the pay is insanely amazing. So looking forward to a wonderful year with you all. This also, by the way, I committed to doing three years back in the classroom. I left the C-suites uh, as a private, uh, you know, corporate training and all that fun stuff. And I agreed to come back for three years to fix this program. And this will be my third year. So I'm looking forward to leaving this district with an incredibly strong IT certification program, one that is not just the best in the area, but the best in Texas, if not the entire country. So um, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, thank you all. It's great seeing everybody here again and back to normal. And I'm also looking forward to my nightly tradition after a board meeting and going to the Waffle House. So y'all have a good one. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Ms. Powell. Good evening. I hope everyone fared well after the hurricane. First off, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Brown on his raise. Congratulations. And I also feel like we should roll out the red carpet for all the fancy attorneys that are here tonight. Good job, y'all. I recently came across a post on Facebook that raised some concerns. I emailed each of you a copy of it. If you don't have a copy, I have another printed copy, then be happy to give it to you. But is the content of these emails the reason behind the potential dismissal of Dr. Fagan? Are these instructions to terminate her being issued by Walsh and Gallegos? I just want to be clear that you have concrete grounds to terminate her and are not subjecting the taxpayers to another frivolous lawsuit. You know, this sounds really familiar. And I want to go back to that motion that the board voted on and approved on December 21st. That was regarding Thomas Newman. 
I move that the board place Thomas Newman on paid leave pending the completion of the ongoing Title IX matters in order to completely insulate him from those matters, both for his own protection as well as the protection of the school board. Is that why it took almost a year to get the results of Mr. Scarfo's Title IX? I mean, I finally got part of that open records request I put in on February 21st, and man, there's a lot of legal bills, guys. I wish some of this money was spent on the kids. I mean, you know, that, that would be great. Um, I assume that Mr. Scarfo's report will be whitewashed since it was brought and paid for by the taxpayers' dollars. Mr. Scarfo, did you really need to make daily phone calls with the district's outside attorney? That's really expensive for us. And remember, the district's broke. Will your Title IX be released tonight? I mean, the December 21st motion did state that it would protect the school board and not the district as a whole. So I assume now that you have a conflict of interest, you'll be recusing yourself tonight on the vote of Dr. Fagan. Again, don't want to get us sued again because we're already in hot water. Additionally, I'd like to inquire about Morgan Morrow's situation. You know, we don't have any general counsel in house, so that's why all these fancy attorneys are here tonight. I mean, is this the norm for the district. It just seems like these lawyers are trying to eliminate any potential threat to their pocketbook just one at a time, knocking them out, taking away their jobs. Speaking of Walsh and Gallegos, I see that Craig Wood and Hannah are here tonight. How much is that going to cost us? Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest, you know, with all the alleged bar complaints? I mean, just saying, again, don't want to have the taxpayers pay for another costly lawsuit, and we all know that TEA is watching us like hawks, y'all. Speaking of TEA, do they know that you guys responded to them before it was approved by the board? <laughs> like, how many more lawsuits are we going to get? And I mean, God forbid TEA come in because the board protected to vote because the board voted to protect itself and not the district as a whole. Hey, Ms. Spaulding, why are all these law firms here tonight? I mean, these, these bills, what, how much is this going to cost us? Thank you, Mrs. Powell. Mrs. Ms. Allen? Good evening. I am Deanie Allen, reading specialist and dyslexia specialist. Tonight, I ask... Why is Elizabeth Fagan the superintendent on paid leave? This question has been asked before and there was absolute silence. Why is Elizabeth Fagan on paid leave? What has she done to prompt a termination? I'm a taxpayer, I would like to know. So far, she seems to have done a good job. You gave her a good evaluation last August. Moving on to conflict of interest, I ask Robert Scarfo to recuse himself from voting on his own Title IX report. Mr. Scarfo should also recuse himself from voting on Dr. Fagan's termination because Dr. Fagan is the wife of Troy Kite, the person who filed the Title IX complaint. Voting on that could easily provide an opportunity for retaliation. I also ask Ken Kirchhofer Chris Parker, and Mike Grabowski to recuse themselves from voting on Fagan's termination. Kirchhofer, Parker, and Grabowski are named respondents in a complaint filed by Troy Kite, the superintendent's husband. Once again, that could be construed to be retaliation, definitely a conflict of interest. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Ms. Carter? And I, if I could get Mr. Silver, Mr. Silva and Mr. Kirk to go ahead and come up to that front row. This is kind of awkward. Good evening, everyone. My name is Natalie Carter. I'm the mother of three amazing kids, two of which are here today. Um, one's in elementary school, one's in middle school, and one's going to be starting at Silver Creek High School. Go Bulldogs. I stand before you today with a sense of urgency and deep concern regarding the proposed actions of tonight's meeting. I believe it's crucial that we acknowledge the gravity of the situation and the potential harm it may cause our district. My purpose today is to specifically address the conflict of interest that requires certain trustees 
to recuse themselves from voting in the Title IX findings and the employment of Dr. Fagan. I want to emphasize that my comments are not meant to endorse, support, any particular side or person, but rather uphold the principles of transparency and accountability. It is important that we abide by the laws by the great state of Texas, which clearly state that state law supersedes board policy, including conflicts of interest. Trustees Scarfo, Parker, Kirchhofer have conflicts of interest. They directly relate to Dr. Fagan's employment and the Title IX complaint filed against Trustee Scarfo. This raises concern about impartiality, fairness, and the protection of the rights of all parties involved. The actions of these trustees have shown a disregard for impartiality and fairness, resulting in valid Title IX and EEOC complaints, allegations of public corruption, multiple lawsuits, and complaints to oversight entities. Their alleged mismanagement and interference in administrative matters have cost the district over a million dollars, ultimately creating a distressing situation without any clear resolution in sight. Trustees Parker, her hostile attitude towards former counsel General Newman. Trustees Kirchhofer, your assumed role as the board liaison to outside counsel. And Trustee Scarfo, your involvement in your own Title IX matter are all examples of interconnected conflicts that compromise the integrity of the board's decisions. These conflicts not only impact the trustees themselves, but also undermine the principles of fairness and accountability. It is crucial that the trustees abstain from voting on the matters related to Dr. Fagan's employment and the Title IX complaint. The integrity of the board's decisions, public trust, and your ability to avoid further investigations and lawsuits depend on it. In conclusion, I implore the board to act in the best interests of our district and ensure that all conflicts of interest are appropriately addressed. I encourage you to uphold the principles of fairness, impartiality, and transparency in your decision-making process. By doing so, you can restore integrity and regain the trust of the community you were elected to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Mr. Silva? Good evening, everybody. My name is Oscar Silva, that guy from Facebook again. Uh, earlier this year, I asked for the board to release a Title IX investigation against the athletic director. Uh, Y'all did that, and thank you for that. The community generally appreciated it. At the time of that request, uh, some of the board trustees uh, made a, uh, expressed some reservations about disclosing that information, specifically citing the pending investigation that is on the agenda for tonight. Um, they emphasized the importance of having full context uh, when it was released. Uh, based on the agenda, I'm assuming that that investigation has concluded, and so it looks like we've reached the point where that full context might be available. In that vein, yesterday I submitted an open records request, and this evening I'm here to formally request the release of that Title IX investigation referenced in item 4C of tonight's agenda regarding Mr. Scarfo. Uh, the previous investigation was about a school district employee, and I mentioned that in my public comment that I didn't know if it would be released because of that. Uh, tonight's is about a, an elected official. Uh, in that regard, I think there's even a greater need for transparency. As you all know, elected officials are chosen by and accountable to the public, and so the community has a right to be informed about serious allegations, investigations involving those we've trusted with leadership positions. Uh, multiple trustees from the dais have publicly acknowledged the seriousness of the allegations. And given that public funds that were referenced earlier have been used for paying for this matter, I think it's in the community's best interest to understand the full scope and the outcome of the investigation. And that is it. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Mr. Kirk? Hey guys, <clears throat> I want to let y'all know that, you know, I love what y'all do. Y'all are elected officials up here, and I know you're getting paid a lot of money. We appreciate you. And, uh, but, but there's some things. I got this article, I don't know if y'all saw it, Humble Ice D. Mull's firing leader it was in the paper today, okay? So I'm going off of this. This is fact, like you would think. And uh, reading through this article here, uh, first off, let me go back. 
Mr. Scarfo, thank you so much for everything you do, buddy. Okay? I appreciate you. You don't deserve what's happening to you. Okay? All I know is this. You were a great guy until Troy Kite what was busted or whatever we want to call it. Okay? All of a sudden, you come up and be a bad guy. Okay? Isn't that amazing? So, uh, and then all I know is now, in this article, Troy quit and Miss Fagan quit. They quit because they didn't get their little way or somebody questioned them. Okay? The last time I looked, we all have bosses. And you're going to get questioned. Okay? And uh, uh, please pick up the good work, Mr. Scarfro. You're doing a good job. And if one thing I would want... And I know I'm jumping all over the place here, guys. If you're going to run for that board up there, vote. Vote. Or don't run. Get off. Okay? There's a reason why we have seven people and four. If it's four and three, then that's that. We got a jury up there. That's what you guys are. And that's us making the decisions for us. And this is our district. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's ours. And you're up there making decisions for us. I expect you guys to vote. And if you're worried about somebody not liking you or you're not liking your vote, get off. Okay? Make the right decision. And I challenge you to do that. And right now, we have zero. Okay? There it goes back to Troy quit, Liz quit. Zero confidence in either one of those two guys. Okay? Hold yourself accountable. Don't go back, okay? And, and in this, uh, so Miss Carter, I don't know how she's getting all this information that she just gives, but what we have here, evidently, the four people, uh, Scarfo, uh, Grabowski, Kirchhoffers, and Parker, they have voted one way or the other. So don't beat them up for it, or, or then I'm going to appeal, appeal, appeal. Crap on a bunch of appeal was voted four to three back to get rid of Troy, okay? And it happened. And evidently, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the way it was with uh, Miss Fagan. So. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Our next item is comments by individual board members, starting with Ms. Lamont Dixon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one, I just wanna say kudos to the barbecue team. I did not know we even had a barbecue team, so I'm very excited that they were also successful, and uh, congratulations to them and Ms. G for coming up with that idea, and for Mr. Manning saying, yes, we're all in, I love that. Um, and second, I just hope that everyone fared well during Hurricane Barrel. Um, I know I was out without power for nine days, but for me, after being flooded with Harvey with 42 inches of water at my house, it didn't seem so bad <laughs> to not have power. But I know a lot of people struggled, and um, I hope everybody's kind of on the other side of that. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Grabowski? I've got a, just a short comment uh, to uh, Ms. Jasmine Thomas, uh, Autumn Creek Elementary, selected as a finalist for Region 4 Elementary Teacher of the Year. Very, very cool work. Thank you. Anybody over here have anything? Mr. Holmes? I had to talk on the, the barbecue. I just had some brisket from Firecraft in Kingwood. So that Summer Creek uh, team, that brisket looked amazing. So anytime you need um, a taste tester, I will surely come right down Westlake Houston and will gladly be a taste tester. So I'm, I'm really proud of that team. And uh, again, um, we continue to push the envelope on things that I think um, I'm gonna even almost say non-traditional from what you would think, but we are creating businesses, and I just appreciate the leadership um, of the school district in that respect. Uh, same comments as uh, Ms. Lamont Dixon, um, just the hurricane. I know that there's still some people without power, still some people without internet. 
still some people without a house because that tree might have fallen through their roof. So again, um, to the entire community, uh, you know, still praying for those that are without. Um, I wanted to mention Mary, and I pray, Mary, please forgive me if I mispronounce your last name. Mary Carew reached out um, to Dr. Brown a couple of weeks ago and uh, set up some uh, food stations. I believe Ms. Lamont Dixon helped volunteer, but um, she worked with the community, a couple of elected officials, um, and was able to pass out food and, and water, and it was a cooling station, I want to say, um, to the Generation Park leadership. They had cooling stations for those, of course, that were without power. Um, again, um, just showed up and, and just really uh, made it about the community. Um, lastly, um, Scott Ford. Um, I think it's not lost on anybody on this board, your passion for kids, and um, it's appreciated. Um, all I'm saying is if this is going to be your last year, you know, please, uh, you know, start working on that succession plan. And if you know of anybody that have the same passion as you, okay, all right then. Well, there you go, but we definitely want somebody um, that's just as passionate as you about our kids and our students. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Kirchhofer? Thank you, Madam President. Some sad news. Um, the coaching community is a tightly knit one. And tonight, it's hurting across the state of Texas. I don't know if anyone saw this news, but uh, late last night in San Antonio at the Texas High School Coaches Convention, Aiden Rose Burt, a 28-year-old volleyball and track coach from Jasper High School. She was struck by a stray bullet while attending a social an evening social event as part of the convention. Tragically, she passed away. Some of our coaches witnessed this tragedy. The Humble ISD counselors will be on campus tomorrow to support coaches who want to talk. I know Coach Murphy was, I believe, sitting right next to her. Um, let's pray for Aiden Burt's family in the Jasper High School community. Our hearts are with you. Definitely. Um, thank you. Mr. Sitton? No comment. Right. Um, Mr. Scarfo? Yeah, thank you, Madam President. I, I just, just want to make these comments. Uh, you know, there have been many comments and accusations uh, were repeatedly made by certain speakers that in, that in due time will show that they were misplaced, inaccurate, to say the least. Once all the reports are released, in addition to the already public Williams Kite Title IX, the public will be able to draw their own informed conclusions and determine which trustees met their fiduciary obligations to this district. There will also be a full accounting on the funds that were expended related to the myriad investigations, PIA requests, and grievance filings over the last year. And for the record, I've had to expend over $35,000 thus far of my personal funds to defend against the Title IX allegations made against me. So just keep all that in mind, okay? Thank you. Our next item is comments by the administration. Dr. Brown? Yes. Well, Mr. Grabowski stole a little bit of my thunder, but we certainly want to congratulate Ms. Thomas on being selected as a finalist for the Region 4 Elementary Teacher of the Year. You know, there's 165,000 educators in our region, and she's one of the six finalists. And when she is announced as the winner, August 1st, she will represent Region 4 in the Texas Teacher of the Year finalist. <clears throat> also want to thank all of our maintenance and operations team for all their work um, yeah. during and after the storm and to get our schools back to where we could occupy them once Centerpoint got some power to us, which they did. And so certainly appreciate that. Appreciate Chris Cummings and his team for keeping us connected. Things you don't see behind the scenes, but that are so important, and Chris and his team work diligently, and we appreciate that. New teachers reported yesterday, so you know school is around the corner. You know when you see the cross-country runners out, the yeah. band in the parking lot? <laughs> Something's about to happen. And so all of that's taken place, and so we welcome our new teachers uh, to our family and look forward to working with them. And then when we meet next, we will have, gosh, I'm 
four or five days under our belt. So yeah. August the 7th. So looking forward to that. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Moving on to our next agenda item, action items from closed session. Item 4A, personnel recommendations. Madam, Madam President, as a point of information, um, I handled this the way I was State supposed to. I handled this the way I was supposed to. I sent an email to ask for clarification and I didn't get a response. My question is, why was our agenda presented to Ellen Spaulding and Paige Kyle from Washington, Ellen Spaulding from Spaulding and, and all the other names, Paige Kyle from Walsh and Gallegos for approval when Walsh was only approved by the board to handle the original Title IX case and the board has not appointed or approved an attorney to handle our day-to-day -day business since general counsel and assistant general counsel were placed on leave and or non-renewed. So my question is, which I asked prior to the meeting, why were the, this agenda presented to those attorneys for approval? Well, I would like to say that we don't have an acting attorney, so Ms. Spaulding has been acting, approving, I mean, or she, Mr. Rush. Did she volunteer, or because the, the board didn't, did not approve that? Madam, Madam President, Chair? The Chair recognizes can, Mr. Scarfo. If I can jump in. No, you as President are allowed to uh, have bring counsel uh, as I had with uh, Ms. Spaulding and her firm. Um, so I, I don't think there's any issue with that. And uh, the fact that you asked for a review of the agenda, I think makes perfect sense. And I think the fact of, um, I didn't know this because I wasn't part of it, but what I'm hearing now is what Walsh and Gagos, I imagine, were involved in were the specific agenda items. And you, you, you tell me that, is that correct. I, I would guess that would be it because I know I had to have many phone calls with them in the past, even though I wasn't a liaison anymore because we had to get agenda items straight. So if I show up on the billing for that period of time, that's the reason, okay? And I'm tired of all the innuendo, but there you go. That's, that's what I would think, and you tell me if that's correct. That is correct, Mr. Scarfo. Well, Madam President, thank you for the clarification on your agenda, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Sitton. Moving on to our next agenda item, action items from closed session. Item 4A, personnel recommendations. Mr. Holmes, do I have a motion? Yes, we have a motion. Motion to approve the administration's personnel recommendations as presented in closed session with addendum. Do second. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passed. Our next item is item 4B, consider and take possible action regarding investigation and decision making regarding Title IX complaints filed, filed by Assistant Athletic Director. Mr. Scarfo, do I have a motion? Madam President, I do not have a motion on that. Um, okay. do, do you have it? I have it. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Holmes. Sure. Consider and take possible action regarding investigation and decision making regarding Title IX complaints filed by Assistant Athletic Director. Do you have the motion? I move to approve Thank the you. board response regarding the investigation report of the complaint against the board filed by the assistant athletic director to designate and authorize Mr. Grabowski to work with Walsh Gallegos to finalize the board responses discussed in closed meeting and to authorize legal counsel to provide it to the independent Title IX decision maker on our behalf. Do you have a second? Second. All those in, in any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Item uh, passes 6-1. Item 4C, consider and take possible action regarding the Title IX reports and findings related to complaint filed by a former athletic director of UIL Athletics Fine Arts against a former board president. Mr. Grabowski, do I have a motion? Yes, Madam President. 
I move to direct legal counsel to provide the independent decision maker report and witness statements and investigative notes to the extent permitted by law related to the complaint filed by former executive director of UIL Athletics and Fine Arts against the former board president to any requesters who may request this documentation with the names redacted as discussed in closed meeting. Do I have a second? <coughs> any discussion? Yes. I'm sorry, who seconded? Yeah, who seconded? Yeah, who, uh, it's my second. Your second? We need a second. Second. Mr. Kirchhofer. All right, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go first if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to share some information about the Title IX investigations. I believe that everyone agrees due process is important. Personal biases can affect the outcomes of investigations. Applying a process consistently to all parties is most fair. Regarding the Title IX investigations on May 4th, 2023, the district received a Title IX complaint involving an employee who was personally close to the superintendent. Everyone is entitled to due process and all complaints are investigated. Therefore, on May 15th, 2023, the school board voted to appoint the law firm of Walsh Gallegos as additional legal counsel. We took this action because we felt it was important that the investigation be conducted by a neutral third party. The person best suited to this approach, uh, to, to approach the situation with an unbiased viewpoint would be somebody who never met the people involved, socially or professionally. This person would have an open mind and listen to all parties. Once appointed as additional legal counsel, Walsh Gallegos hi hired an independent Title IX coordinator, an independent Title IX investigator who actually conducted the investigation. The investigator wrote a report. The report went to an independent third party decision maker who had never met any of the parties involved. One party involved in the report appealed the recommendation of the decision maker. The appeal was heard by yet another independent Title IX decision maker. On April 9, 2024, the school board voted to release the report to the public. The same process was used in a complaint that was filed against the former board president. It is important to know that the board was not involved in conducting any investigation. Throughout the process, the board's role was to receive, read, and act on reports. In the past 14 months, two, a couple people filed uh, 10 or more complaints. We were re required to ensure all were investigated. The same process was used for all of the complaints. While not all of the Title IX are complete at this point, many are. Thus far, the independent decision maker and appellate decision maker found only the original complaint to be sustained. As I stated, it is important, uh, it, it is important that personal biases, uh, it is important that due process is, is used. Personal biases can affect the outcome in, of investigations. Applying a process consistently to all parties is most fair. The school board was placed in a tough situation and our goal was to move forward consistently without any personal bias. Thank you. The chair recognizes Mr. Sitton. Yeah, a matter of clarification though, both, both parties did file a, an appeal, not just one. Uh, okay, so uh, that appeal decision was also not part of the original packet of documents that were released. Uh, and I've asked for that to be released as well because you're not getting the entire picture uh, as far as what was actually uh, found and what was actually not substantiated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then as far as the, the emotion that's on the table, I have no problem releasing it. We've already released one. I have no problem releasing this one, but we just got the finding and we know that it is eligible for an appeal. So you can't release these documents until the process is completely finished. And at this point, it may or may not be appealed. We don't know. 
have no idea. And so you've got to wait for that to happen and then release it all at one time, including the appeal findings, which we didn't release last time. Thank you, Mr. Sitton. Anybody over here? Ms. Lamont Dixon. Yes, um, last time I, when we were talking about releasing documents, I just wanted to clarify, I, I voted to not release the documents simply because that wasn't our norm. Typically what we do is we release the documents to the AG and then when they come back, then we would release them. But since we have broken away from norm, then you know going forward, I mean, I guess this is our new standard. Um, so I'm, I guess if we're voting to release documents, um, I'll, I'll be for it if that's what the community wants. Um, but really, you know, going back, I feel like we should always go to the AG first. But I mean, I think we've changed course here. So just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Ms. Lamont Dixon. Mr. Holmes? No, I'm good. Mr. Grabowski? Yeah, I'm still the freshman up here, uh, 13 months. It's been a very interesting run. Um, I want to start by thanking my board members. We've been through a lot up here. You know, we volunteer a lot of our time. But I will say this about all seven of us. I, I can't speak for the board, but what I witness. We all work very hard up here to get it right. We work very hard on your behalf because we work for you. That is not lost on us. And Dr. Brown, thank you for stepping up in the leadership role. Very appreciative. And to your administration, thank you very much for picking up. And to all the principals and on the campus and admin staff and the 3,300 teachers that put up with this year too, because all, all I really wanted to do is take care of those 3,300 teachers and all their kids. You know, my wife's a teacher, as most of you know. And I, month after month, I come home and say, eventually, baby, I'm going to be able to take you, care of you and your kids. But not yet, but hopefully soon. But in the report, we've got to, we've got to re read the report. This was about bad adult behavior. And you're going to get to read about it soon. If it gets appealed, the deadline is Thursday. Then they have a certain period of time of five days for that appeal process to play out. And I agree, the appeal, the appeal comments should be released too. It should be in its entirety if it wasn't last, since it wasn't last time. But when we vote on this item, there have been nine law firms that have done outstanding work, in my opinion. You've had, heard other trustees have a different opinion on them. I think you all have been amazing sitting in the front row and in, towards the back of the room, and others that are not here that are maybe watching online or will see it archived. Thank you all very much. About 20 attorneys, greater than 140 hours, I mean 140 years of law school experience have gone into these decisions. They come from places like McKinney, Texas, San Antonio, nearby Spring, and nearby downtown Houston, all not related to each other. And they unanimously, independently, came up with the same decision, that this should be released. I just, again, thank you all for your guidance. It's been one heck of a year, and uh, the end of the, Line is getting close to being in sight, and we have had outstanding legal representation, in my opinion. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Kirchhofer, do you have anything? Mr. Scarfo? No, no, no real comment. I, I think it all should be released. Absolutely. Every last word of it. I hope it is. All right. Ms. Parker. I'm sorry. One more, just a matter, another matter of clarification. When we voted on releasing the first set of documents, it was against legal advice. So they were not unanimously saying we need to do this. Mr. Mr. Sitton, um, I beg your pardon, but that was attorney client privileged from closed session. And probably we we can go we can no, go no, no. we can go into close and, and and ask the legal. I'm I'm repeating what was said in open session. I understand. By Paige Kyle, so that was not attorney client privilege. She said it right there in open session. 
No, sir. But okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion carries. Was it five yeas, uh, one nay, Mr. Sitton, and one abstention, Mr. Holmes? All right. Uh, Item 5D, consider and take possible action regarding employment of a superintendent, including proposed termination. Mr. Grabowski, do I have a motion? Yes, Madam President. I, me I move to propose the mid-contract termination of the term contract of Superintendent Elizabeth Fagan for good cause and to authorize the acting superintendent, board designee, or Walsh Gallegos to differ to deliver written, written notice to Dr. Fagan of this board action as required by law. I further move that the board designate and authorize Trustee Ken Kirchhofer to work with Walsh Gallegos as discussed in closed meeting regarding the handling of the proposed termination of Dr. Fagan. Do I have a second? The motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sitton? Uh, as a just clarification, that was basically two decisions made into one uh, motion. Do, do those need to be split or can they be made concurrently in one motion? I'm, no, I'm asking you. You're you're the who who's advising us at this point. Sure. I'm confused. Uh, that motion can be made as written. It does not need to be split. Of course, the board could amend the motion. <coughs> it's your choice, but the motion is, is legally appropriate. Because even it, though we're I'm asking sorry, for is two, it, is your mic on? I can't. No, my mic's okay. not on. Would you okay. like me to repeat what I said? Yes, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Sitton, your question was, was the motion legally appropriate or did it need to be split into two? Right, the because motion, it, we're actually voting on two separate things. The motion is legally appropriate. You can vote on two separate things in the motion. Of course, the board can amend the motion to vote on each one individually if that is, if that is the choice of the board, but there is nothing legally inappropriate with the motion. Well, and, and, but we couldn't split it and vote it on two separate motions because it's only one agenda item. So I'm, I'm just, I just, want to make sure I, I know what we're doing. The agenda item can be made into two motions as long as they relate to the agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Lamont Dixon. Ms. Spaulding, um, on that motion, I mean, I feel like the public has a right to know why we would be terminating the superintendent. Can you state the reason why we are that we have a motion to, to terminate the superintendent. So first, it's not my motion. Second, um, I'm not gonna give legal advice in here. I will give legal advice to the board in closed session and I think Mr. Wood was attempting to give some legal advice in closed session earlier when that closed session ended. If the board would like additional legal advice my recommendation would be to go into closed session to get that advice. Board members can discuss reasons that they are going to vote one way or another way, but if you're asking for lawyers to talk about legal advice, I believe that needs to be done in closed session. So can I say why the motion is being made, the cause, the quote unquote cause for can the motion? Can you say why you believe there is cause? Is that your Can question? I say why I believe that the motion is being stated, you can, the basis for this motion? I understand your question. You may discuss the motion on the table and anything related to it. So I can say in open session, the cause that was stated to us about why we are terminating or wanting to terminate or have a motion on the floor to terminate 
the superintendent. Whether this board decides to terminate the superintendent is not because the lawyers have told you to or not told you to. Oh, no, to. no, I, I'm, not, I'm so, not implying that. I'm so, not implying that. I'm saying the specific reason that the board is making the motion. Are you asking whether you can reveal attorney-client privileged information in open session? Or are you asking, I don't think I understand your question. If there's an op opinion about cause that a board member has, that board member can say it. I would suggest that we go into closed and allow Ms. Lamont Dixon to ask whatever questions she wishes. Thank you. I would appreciate that, Madam Chair. Let's take a, a short break and we will go back into closed. The time is now 8.05 p.m. Going into closed session. Just going into closed. 551071 consultation with board attorney regarding all matters as authorized by law. The time is now 8.09 and we're back from our short break. Does anybody have uh, any discussion? Ms. Lamont Dixon. Thank you very much for that, Madam Chair. I really do appreciate it. Um, I just, the reason I had to ask this question, um, and so I didn't want to break any laws or rules here, but um, I felt like the cause should have been in the motion. Um, but just to clarify, I did step out of closed session early because I do not want to, I want the comments that I want to make to be made in public. So. Um, so there may have been some discussion, but I wanted to make sure that we could, we could discuss the cause. Um, and so the motion did not share the reason behind why there is a motion for termination. And that reason, in my opinion, is not cause for termination. Um, and the reason um, is failure to maintain a relationship with the board. Now, I have two issues with that. One, I don't believe we have cause to do that. I don't believe it's in her contract. But the other thing is that is not why we put Dr. Fagan on leave in the first place. Um, and the reason that we put her on leave in the first place, after that meeting, that evening, it was debunked that it wasn't true. So in my opinion, after that meeting, since we found out that night that the reason we put her on leave was not true, then we should have had a special meeting and reinstated her, in my opinion. We did not do that. But today, we are now saying there's a motion on the floor to, put our super, to, to potentially terminate our superintendent for failure to maintain a relationship with the board. So I just have a couple of points and questions. One, I agree wholeheartedly with Ms. Parker that we should not have personal bias. Number two, I believe that people have the right to have due process. And in my opinion, we have not given Dr. Fagan due process. So I have two questions for our board president. One, have we given her an improvement plan? We have not. Have we given her anything in writing? Ms. Balding, can we go back into closed session? And I just want to make sure I'm not <laughs> saying anything out of turn. Is that OK? That's right. I would recommend we go into closed session under 551071, consultation with board attorney, and 551074, a deliberation regarding personnel, including the. No, it, it's OK. You don't have to answer. I will answer. We have not. OK. So, and then the other side of this, we have a board, well, we had a board and superintendent evaluation committee. Has that committee met in a year? Has anything been called? No. Mr. Scarfo was president a whole school year, and we never had a meeting for the board and superintendent evaluation committee. Do we add any issues to her goals to say, we want you to improve this, this, or this? No, because we never had a meeting with the board and superintendent evaluation committee for an entire year. Matter of fact, Mr. Richard Stoisis has come here many times to speak about test scores. 
we easily could have had a meeting and added that to the superintendent's goals. But we did not have a meeting for a full year to discuss anything regarding the superintendent. A matter of fact, that committee was dissolved on a 4-3 vote so that we wouldn't even have the committee because we wanted the full board to be a part of a non-committee. And then we never had a meeting about it. Not one meeting in an entire school year regarding anything that the superintendent has done wrong. We could have met easily. We could have added things like test scores to her goals. Whatever concerns you have about failure to maintain a relationship, we could have written out an improvement plan. We've done none of that. So I guess one of the questions I have is where is the documentation? Since I've been on the board, she's had a perfect evaluation. What happened for all of you here to lose faith in her? She has excellent ratings from every person on this board except Mr. Grabowski because he wasn't on the board. Not only that, people can come here and speak about Mr. Kite, Dr. Fagan, what have you, I understand. But we allowed them to date. They did tell us, not you, Mr. Grabowski, <laughs> but everybody else here, everybody else here, she told us. When we've asked questions in the past, we have been ignored. I know Mr. Sitton asks questions all the time. He's ignored. When I ask questions, ignored. I'm just trying to lay out the facts because ultimately, ultimately, if you don't like Dr. Fagan, that's fine. That's fine. But we have not gone through a process, a real process for an employee to say, oh, well, failure to maintain relationship with the board. I mean, I, I just think that's a very weak argument for terminating someone who has a perfect evaluation. And then not only that, she technically has a contract for four more years on it. So let me just say this. We've spent about $1.8 million on attorneys so far. You're gonna, we're gonna end up paying her like $1.5 million or more. So we need to really think about the fact that we're about to make almost, if you look at other things too that could come from this, we're about to make almost a $5 million decision today out of taxpayer money because you don't like Dr. Fagan somehow or whatever it is, or you feel like she didn't tell you something here and changed her mind, but there is nothing in writing. There is no documentation. And you have a right to not like a person, but to me, if you're going to stand here and we're gonna be honorable about this situation, I think it's very important for us to say, what did we do, okay, as a board? I don't think it's fair for anyone. We all work in different industries. If you have an employee, would you just, you don't give them a chance, you don't give them an improvement plan? I'm just saying, that's what the board does. Do y'all serve on other boards? That's what you do as a board. If you have a problem with the one employee that you have, you tell them and you make changes and you hold a board and superintendent evaluation committee meeting to make those changes. We don't sit here and just be upset about something and say, okay, well, we're just gonna let that person go. And if I were our top employees, which we have lost a lot, by the way, Y'all need to definitely read our, recommend, our, our resignation list. It's like if you don't fall in line, then you're like let go or pushed or pressured. Why are we doing that? We have never been this way. You know, we're being investigated right now by TEA. 
And honestly, I welcome the intervention because I do not think that this is the way we should handle business. And when they call me, I intend to fully cooperate because I think what we are doing is wrong. And in my opinion, I know we have lots of attorneys and I understand that. And I think all of our attorneys know me well enough to know that I am not here to, to disparage you. But I do not think what we're doing is the right thing. It's just not. So I hope all of us up here would just pr pretend for like the next 10 minutes that we're all in the honors class and we really think about the way due process really works and we do not vote to terminate our superintendent. Madam President, I'm sorry to Thank interrupt. Thank you, Ms. Lamont Dixon. May I just caution the board and remind the board that the superintendent evaluation is confidential, and so as you are stating opinions tonight, if you choose to state your opinion, just remember that unless and until she chooses to release that information, to keep her evaluative information <coughs> confidential at this time. Mr. Sitton. Okay, I'm looking at Dr. Fagan's contract. So I'm not gonna state opinions. I'm gonna read it. Item 4.1, development of goals. Superintendent shall submit to the board a preliminary list of goals for the district each year for the board's consideration and adoption. She did that. The superintendent of the board shall then meet and the board shall approve or revise the list of goals. We did that. Superintendent shall submit to the board for its approval, plan to implement these goals. She did that. Superintendent of the board shall meet no less than annually to assess the goals and may adjust or revise the goals either by action of the board or upon recommendation of the superintendent and approval of the board. As Ms. Lamont Dixon talked about, uh, that never happened. The goals approved by the board shall at all times be reduced to writing and shall be among the criteria on which the superintendent's performance is reviewed and evaluated. The board agrees to work with and support the superintendent in achieving these district goals. Uh, that really hasn't happened either. So then we go to item 7.3, dismissal for good cause. The term good cause is defined and there's items A through Q. I'll pick out a couple. I'll pick out just one because I think this really goes to what Ms. Lamont Dixon was actually talking about as well. So item 7.3, number B, incompetence or inefficiency in the performance of required or assigned duties as documented by evaluations, supplemental memoranda, or other written communication from the board Provided, however, the terms and conditions of this paragraph shall not justify good cause unless the board has provided the superintendent a reasonable opportunity to remediate any incompetency or inefficiency. We have done none of that. We haven't even discussed it. We haven't discussed as a board not listening to attorneys' opinions, but as a board, as a team of seven, as a team of eight when she was here and not on leave, we never discussed her job performance or her future job prospects of staying in Umbalasti. None of that's ever been discussed. Nothing's been put in writing. Nothing, nothing has been talked to her about. I, I just, I mean, it's, it's right here. There's, there's only one other thing, the last item Q, and this is the catch-all, any other reason constituting good cause under Texas law. So you've got a catch-all phrase there, and that's what we're going to hold our hat on. I'm sorry, I, I, there's just no possible way that in good conscience you could do this without ever having a conversation with the individual and putting anything in writing 
as a board. Now, I'm not talking about attorney opinions or whatever. I'm talking about as a board, doing our due diligence and doing our job, we've done none of that. Mr. Grabowski? I'll come right out and say it. I'm going to vote to propose termination. Now I'm going to tell you how I get there. I started thinking to myself all week when I, or the last few days when I saw this on the agenda. When was the last time Mike Grabowski was asked to make such a major decision about employment in someone's life? And it brought me back to my own professional life and my graduate, I'm a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. Went on to fly fighters, trainers in the Air Force, and I've had a magical commercial pilot run. When I was 21 years old, three months to go in our senior year, I was commissioned to be part of an honor board at the Air Force Academy, Naval Academy, all military academies. You live under an honor code. We will not lie, steal, or cheat, nor tolerate among us anyone who does. There was a female cadet who was in our little cadet sundry store that we would get little knickknacks, snacks, school supplies. She had put on, she went past the counter where she tried on some makeup looking in the mirror. She took the makeup and put it in her pocket. She went and got some more sundries, filled up her basket, paid her bill, and walked out the door without paying for the lipstick that was in her pocket. She is three months from graduation. And we were asked to figure out that she's tried to steal that lipstick. We had three females on the panel of seven, or four females on the panel of seven of which I was on. And they explained that in a certain uniform, because we're dictated what we wear in the military, it's not our choice often, that is where females stored their lipstick. She'd been a cadet for three years and eight months. How many times did she put lipstick in that pocket? Is what I kept asking myself. She walked out of that store, in Mike Grabowski's opinion, unknowing that that lipstick was in that pocket unpurchased. That's the intent. She did not have intent to shoplift. She simply took something off premise without paying for it. And we unanimously found her seven, nothing, innocent. But that's just a step of the process like where we are tonight. If we had found her guilty, then it goes to the commandant. If the commandant of the Academy of One Star General finds her guilty, he cannot remove her. It must go to the Secretary of the Air Force. I'm telling you all that because we're in a process too. Because I've seen some of the overwhelming evidence against Dr. Fagan. A lot of it, some of it was just presented the last 15 minutes of closed session. Of which some people walked out, but I saw. And I, I independently agree with the nine law firms, the nearly 20 attorneys, and the 140 years of experience that Dr. Fagan's intent was very different than that cadet. Numerous purposeful actions were done to damage this district. I'm going to repeat that. Numerous purposeful actions were done to damage this district. How this vote won't be 7-0 is mind-boggling to me. But some of us walked out and hearing some of the evidence. Is the man with the camera still there? Are you with the Chronicle? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, I just want you to... Make sure you get this part straight, that this is a step in the process. If we vote today, and it's four to three or greater to remove Dr. Fagan, Dr. Fagan is our superintendent. She can appeal. It will then go to the TEA. A hearing officer will hear the story. He or she will, has between 60 and 120 days to come up with a decision. I know, Mrs. Allen, you want the answers as to the whys, but we can't give them to you right now. This is an ongoing process, and it's not complete tonight. This is just one step. 
And I promise this to you. I'm a big advocate for trustees to be able to put what we want on these electronic boards. You know that. I showed it with the star data and the drastic decline that we've had. When this is all said and done, I will work with the attorneys. I will create slides and I will show you all the evidence if given permission to put it up on those slides. I know you all want to know. I know you do. This is just not the right time yet. It is an ongoing process. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Grabowski. Mr. Holmes, did you have something? Yeah, so I know um, it's not the, the why, and I'm gonna continue to say this, I'm not debating the why. I'm debating, debating again how we're doing this. How is it that I'm an equal parts trustee board member and there are certain people on this board that have access to information that I don't and you're able to make decisions about somebody's employment and I don't have that same access to information. Our legal attorneys from both houses that are here tonight have heard me say this over and over and over again to the point of frustration. I'm not debating the merits of why each of you individuals are choosing to make your decision. What I'm basing it is on the basic tenets of why. How is it that you have access to information, certain board members, and I don't? So I'm gonna ask the community, how would you feel, and you've heard multiple people, I think Mr. Grabowski was the last one to say it, you want me to dis determine the fate of our superintendent based on 15 minutes. Would you be okay if so your boss walked into your office one day and said that in a matter of 15 minutes, they fired you? Is that fair? See, because from, from what I, let's see, due process. Definition of due process is, in short definition, is a legal requirement that legal matters be handled fairly Fairly, fair, meaning 50-50, even, and in accordance with established rules and principles. So I was told, and I actually, I understand what our legal counsel um, shared, that certain things can't be shared as to the why. So you, again, want me to make a decision, but you can't tell me everything because of quote-unquote leaks. Yeah. How, how, tight a, how tight of a line am I walking by stating that I was told I can't have access to certain information that I need to make a decision because there are leaks, quote unquote, on the board. Not established leaks, but quote unquote leaks. So please, counsel, help me out. What can I do? I know it's about a vote, and I think you know I'm gonna vote no on this. My point in the matter, it has happened with Thomas Newman, not basing the merits of the why, it's the how. No performance improvement plan, no written documentation. So again, it seems like again, I'm being asked to make decisions with limited information. This seems like kindergarten where you know, or your parents when you're five years old and you're told what to do and how to do it. But this time, fast forwarded about 49 years now, right? <laughs> and I'm being asked to make decisions and just being told, make it based off limited information that some trustee board members have and I'm supposed to be okay with it and I'm not. And I'm absolutely sick of it. There can be special meetings brought together. Yes, I am so tired of special meetings, but I will tell you what, we've had quite a few over the last year. I've had to move travel. I was supposed to be in DC today. I'm leaving out first thing tomorrow morning because I wanted to be here. So my point is, I don't care about how many special meetings we need to have. I need the information in order to make an accurate decision on somebody's employment. And if we don't, if we take that in the body of 15 minutes, it happened when we made the um, decision last time to put her on leave, no facts, 
and I'm only hearing one side. And then it seemed like it was refuted, at, as Mrs. Lamont Dixon shared, in subsequent emails by the superintendent, but I've heard nothing beyond that. So again, I'm not arguing why, I'm arguing how we're doing this. And I'm asking the community, do you, would you agree, would you want somebody making a decision on your employment based on limited information and within, sometimes I think when we decided to put her on leave, I think it was five minutes I was given to deliberate. That's why I abstained. You're not gonna get an abstention this time, you're gonna get an absolute no. I'm not in favor of making these types of decisions with limited information. And I'm gonna ask for further discussion on why I as a board member continue to have to make decisions with limited information when I'm an equal voting member. That's the problem I have. Mr. Holmes, would you care to go back into closed session and discuss I absolutely, it further? I, I, can I, may, yes, um, may, may, may I respond, Madam President? You are recognized. Thank you. It's 834. Unless I'm presented with where it says in the employment contract that Dr. Fagan has went against what is in that contract, unless I'm given more than five minutes to assess the information presented as to why we're considering even the point of wanting to terminate her. And yes, I know that she can, um, I know, I get all that. She can, she can, you know, file against that. I get that. But my suggestion is, Madam President, that we table this. Because again, I'm being asked again with Thomas, with, with Thomas Newman, with putting Dr. Fagan on leave, and now for termination. And again, it just seems like, again, community, I'm just letting you know, I don't have enough information to make a, a, a really good judgment on your behalf. And I was hired to represent you. I was, I was voted in to represent you. And I don't feel that I can accurately do that. Would you care to go back into closed session? Sure. All right. Excuse me. I, I the chair recognizes Mr. Scarfo. Yeah, well, thank you. Is that, I think you will let us speak first before we go and do that. But as a matter of point of order, you asked Mr. Holmes if he wanted to go into closed. He said yes. You agreed. So any other discussion can happen after we come back out. That's appropriate. All right, let's go into close. Under 551071, consultation with board attorney, and 551074, deliberation regarding personnel, including superintendent, the time is 836. Nine twenty one. we are back from our short break, uh, long break, and I want to apologize to everybody here for um, keeping you later than what you need, but this is just such an important decision. I just felt like we needed to get more facts and we had quite the lively uh, talk. So, so uh, okay, Mr. Scarfo. Yeah, I, I, it's getting late. Um, look, I just wanna say like some of the comments that were made, uh, Ms. Dixon, I'm sorry, but the leave of absence reason was not debunked. As a matter of fact, it was verified um, in terms of what happened. And you know, the picture you're painting, it, it to me is just fantasy, as well as some other comments that were made. And I, you know what, we've had information for months and months and months. And that information was provided by council in detail as to why we're at the point we are now. I've heard all of it for quite a long time. And I'm at the point now where, okay, I, I get it. I got the information I need to make an informed decision. And that's what I'm ready to do. And, you know, this whole thing about, well, I, I don't want to get into that, but like I said, it's, we've had the information for months. It's not, and, and I don't understand the comment, Mr. Holmes, that some people had information you did not have. I, I'd like to know what that is, because I didn't have any information that, anybody else had 
Um, you even got my Title IX report. You got to see it as a board member, um, as I did. Um, you got to see it pretty much the next day than when I did or the other party did. Um, and that's just one piece of a lot of puzzle pieces. Uh, so I, I'm really at a loss. And, and I just don't like when people just say stuff and it becomes innuendo. Uh, it becomes not really a fact, but people may think that, it, that it's true. And then you have people who go off on tangents based on things like that. And I've seen, seen comments made here, social media, other places, newspaper. Um, but anyway, I, the information has been quite extensive. The reasoning, I believe, has been quite exhaustive and very diligent. And I, I can't come to any other conclusion. Uh, so I'm comfortable now, after all these many, many months, to be able to, to make a decision. Thank you. Mr. Kartoffer? Am I last to go? I don't know. No. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take you through all three years I've been sitting here, but I will take you quickly through the last 14 months. Um, the seven of us on the board 14, 15 months ago, uh, when uh, Mike came on and Robert Scarfo was reelected, um, I'd say we were, um, there was a pretty good relationship. Martina and I had a good relationship. Um, Robert Sitton and I, Marcus, of course, Scarfo, not so much, a little bit. He's, he, you know, um, Chris. But Dr. Fagan, Dr. Fagan and I, um, very close relationship. And I understand from a trustee standpoint that our job's to govern her. That's it. Not anybody sitting in front of me. Um, I sure wish we talked about teachers all the time and the kids and about hiring the best teachers. I think we've got the best teachers in the state, if not the country. We continue to do that. Pay them more money, bring them here, um, make, the, make it irresistible. And then you go through this last 14 months. We can sit here, we can finger point at each other, we can blame the process. Um, all seven of us up here, um, we all do different things in life. But I know all seven of us up here have gotten in trouble for doing something in life that we wish we didn't do. We wish we got one back. We, for me, probably a hundred things. You know, um, Dr. Fagan and I had a great relationship up to about two months ago. And, um, you know, I wish we weren't here. I wish this decision wasn't brought here. Um, I always said transparency, accountability, and our CEO of our company, that's who she is. We have to, that leader has to have impeccable behavior. And if she knows, and if she knows, and you already have one Title IX in information, you're getting another one back tonight about uh, Robert Scarfo, and you can cry and say, well, the investigation's crooked, and, you know, Walsh and guy goes and all the bills. Well, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. We work for the taxpayers. Our job is to govern one person. And... Um, that one person just needed to make a decision when she was aware of behavior that was going on. Just make a decision. Send a message to the rest of the district. I'm not going to tolerate it, no matter who it is. No matter who it is. And um, I'm not going to walk you through the 14 months. Yeah, I was the liaison. Um, Okay, everybody up here. Marcus Holmes has the same information that I do. Everybody up here has the same information I do. This, you know, I wish I wasn't here. 
But you know what? There's been times in life when each one of us made a mistake and we had to be held accountable for it. It's unfair to the people watching, sitting here, the teachers, the administration. It's unfair to all of you. If you want to be mad, be, be mad at the trustees, be mad at me, fine. It's um, unfortunate that we're here, and we shouldn't have been here. Um, I, I just want to say again, I trusted Dr. Fagan to do the right thing, and when it came down to it, her and I always had a conversation. She said, Ken, will you let me know when it's time to go? Will you let me know? That came two months ago. And her and I, we talked weekly. We talked hours all the time. A great relationship. And um, it's not easy. And um, I really uh, wanted to tell everybody that Two months ago, when I talked to her, I asked her at that time, she said, You're, you tell me, I said, now it's time to go. We had many conversations. When she was applied for the Reno job, on a Sunday, hours on the phone with her, she said, if I don't get the Reno job, I'll hand you my resignation. I said, great, I'll let the rest of the board know. Everyone had the information that's sitting up here two months ago. That never came. So my trust, when you lied to me, um, the trust broke, 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 broke. That's where I am sitting here. Our leader of this district has to be above board without reproach. I mean, has to be the, um, there is no indecision. If, if it's wrong, it's wrong. I always say we call balls and strikes. If it's wrong, it's wrong. How does it, how do the administration up here and how do the teachers feel and all the people that work in this district when you allow someone to do what was done and you don't do anything about it? Now you want to blame us for this process taking so long, but they're allowed due process. They're allowed it. And they'll can, no matter what we do tonight, they're allowed due process as they should. And... Um, Everybody has the same information we do. Every one of them, us up here, and um, we'll make the decision tonight and see what happens, and we'll move forward. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the taxpayers. Could we have done a better job? Of course we could have. We tried. We tried. You got seven of us here slugging it out in the back, and um, you know the leaks? Where'd all the leaks come? How'd my emails get out? How, do, how, how, how are leaks going to me that Walsh and Gallegos doesn't have? How did they get out? How? Right? You're going to blame Walsh and Gallegos? Walsh and Gallegos didn't have my, those emails that were leaked did not have them. So did somebody up here leak them? Or somebody in the administration leak them? Or somebody in the legal department leak them? Why was there such suppression? Why was, I mean, why the fight the whole time? the fight for 14 months. All we had to do was have one person step up and say, enough, we're not doing this anymore, it's over with. So I'm sorry, um, it's a tough decision, and um, that's it. Ms. Lamont Dixon? Yeah, I have a couple of questions and then one comment. Um, first question I have, um, Mr. Grabowski, um, to, tonight, we're talking about failure to maintain a relationship with the board. I just wanted to ask, have you ever tried to establish a relationship with Dr. Fagan? Like, have you ever asked to have a meeting with her? I come from the military where I believe in a rank, military rank of command, and I see her as my employee, and it's not my responsibility, nor part of my job function. I don't believe to have a personal relationship with her. I have a very professional relationship, and that's what I judge myself on. So have you ever had a one-on-one -on -one professional meeting with Dr. Fagan? Yes, I had uh, the, the initial training for two days. The initial oh, orientation that we all have to go through by law. Okay, then it was by law, but the answer is yes. Okay. And then, um, 
Mr. Scarfo, I think we're just gonna have to disagree. And I don't know on, on the email that we received, debunking in my opinion, um, but I'm sure if anybody wants to do a public information request on the emails that Dr. Fagan sent, that's probably possible. So we can't say that. Is that attorney the client debunking? privileged? That was closed session discussion. All of it. Um, I would say. Can, can I? Can I? With the email, I believe you're. That was about. after the school board meeting had Correct. closed. Correct. So we had the discussion in closed session about. I believe we're talking about um, when she was placed on leave. That situation. Right, but that email and came after the board she, meeting, and we were told we could even talk to her directly. Correct. About so she emailed that. The, that night and the next day about what we discussed in closed session, correct? Yes. About correct. the leave, okay. yes. So that was based on legal advice in closed session when we talked about the email, and then she, she was not in closed session at that time, correct? Correct. I'm, I'm not talking about the one you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about, I don't know whether to go back to closed yeah, session. So, okay. That's why I was it's, trying to, trying to. But I, I don't think we're talking about the same email. Assuming you're not, <laughs> anybody can do a public information act okay. request for anything they want. Okay. Whether it is disclosed depends on the exceptions in the Texas public information okay. act. I was just sure. saying we have a difference of opinion. So I just was trying to, to, to address that. Okay, last thing. Um, or. I'm sorry, one more comment, and then I will ask Ms. Spaulding a, a final question. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of the things that we are going through really began. Um, Mr. Scarfo, I believe, this is my opinion, we will not agree. I believe it was retribution because you were not voted in as president initially. Um, because that's when this district really, truly became in disarray. Yeah, Mr. Kirchhofer came to me that April. Ma Madam President, point of order. State your point. Uh, the point of order. Uh, the trustees talking out of school. If, if they're not given the floor by you, they need to be quiet. That is correct. Thank you. I'm just saying, Mr. Kirchhofer came to me that April, the end of my term, first year as board president and said that he was not going to vote for you as president. This had nothing to do with anyone else on this board. And what did I do? I talked him off the fence. I said he should vote for you to be president. But then, through your own actions, other things took place, and he came back to me in June, before the June board meeting, to say, I, I respect you, Martina. I respect that you tried to talk me off the fence, but I am not going to vote for him for president. This is how we, we got to where, like, all of these things that transpired with a district in disarray started in that moment. And then, then you go out into the community, essentially. People call me all the time. Yeah, Ms. Scarfo sent someone here to speak to say that you had a backdoor deal and da 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 da. None of that's true. None of it's true, because that's where it started. But I sat here quiet and allowed you to speak every board meeting for a whole year and disparage me and tear me down when I wasn't against you at all. But here, well, you know, but that's where we are. That's all I have to say on that, but I do have a question, Ms. Balding. I hope I do better than the last question. <laughs> Would you please share what happens if this vote passes tonight? What the process looks like? What the risk could potentially be for the district? What all of that looks like? Because we could potentially be putting ourselves in, in a world of trouble. I know some people don't see it that way, but I, I do. But, but would you please explain the process, depending, if we were to vote tonight to terminate our superintendent, what does that look like going forward? Yes, I understand your question. And I, is your mic on? It is. Oh, I can't hear you. Okay. 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 Is that better? Yes. Okay. If you vote to propose termination tonight with the motion language as it is, 
one of the designated parties will provide notice to the superintendent of the board's vote to propose termination of her employment. Okay. The superintendent will receive that in writing, and then the superintendent has 15 days by which to make an appeal to the Texas Education Agency. If the superintendent does not make an appeal, the agenda, I, the, the action comes back to the board to make a final decision on the termination of the superintendent's employment. <laughs> if the superintendent makes an appeal to the Texas Education Agency, the Texas Education Agency appoints an independent hearing examiner from the Texas Education Agency, individuals certified through the Texas Education Agency. That individual then calls a hearing that is like a mini trial. That hearing takes place within 60 to 105 days of when the hearing examiner, it, when, when the superintendent requests the hearing. And that trial allows the superintendent due process to make her appeal. She can be represented by counsel. The district can be represented by counsel. The evidence is presented very much like a trial in a courtroom with similar, some similar, some dissimilar rules, but rules that are clear through the Texas Education Code and its supporting regulations. And then the hearing examiner makes a written recommendation of proposed findings of fact, conclusions of law, and can choose to make a recommendation. After that time, the hearing examiner's written proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law come to the board and the board must vote and make a decision on the hearing examiner's proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law within the rules of Chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. That vote can be to terminate or not to terminate or to modify the hearing examiner's findings of fact or conclusions of law. Is that what okay. you're looking for? That is exactly what right. I'm looking for. And last point on that, if we are all, we're under investigation, the district by TEA. So if they were to send in a monitor or a conservator, what does that look like? Does that stop the process? Is it pause it? Like what happens? Unclear. 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 I have seen you know, monitors come in on very specific issues like you have an issue in the X department, and then matters related to that department may be controlled by the monitor or semi-controlled. I've seen monitors come in for a full board, and that might change it. So it would just depend on what, if the TEA appointed a monitor, if the TEA appointed, appointed a conservator, and for what. Okay. Hard to speculate. There's too many possible okay. options. That makes sense. OK. Thank you so much. I Thank really you. do appreciate you. your answer. Anybody else? Mr. Scarfo? Yeah, I do, because I'm sorry, but um, you know, this claiming I disparaged you, go back and watch the meetings. I didn't disparage you. The only thing I pushed on was that I said you needed to step down because we were violating our policy and procedures. That's not disparaging you. And to say, oh, people were telling you all this stuff, well, that's hearsay. But I will tell you this. Um, when you were out campaigning for city council, you made a comment in front of uh, Mr. Flickinger to a potential voter. He didn't know, you didn't know. And uh, when he mentioned to them that the board president was supporting him in his campaign, you said to that person, oh, you mean the one who's charged with sexual harassment? Okay, I think that's a bit of a disparagement because at that point, you know, those were allegations not yet uh, decided upon. So, you know, you, you want to paint yourself, go, do whatever you want, um, that's fine, but don't, don't try to make this about me saying this is retribution going back. And besides, I do have, and I'm gonna ask the board to waive privilege um, to release those emails that clearly show a conspiracy, at least let the public decide whether it's a conspiracy, conspiracy or not, what three board members did about that whole rotation process, uh, and let them decide. Because I'm going to ask, and hopefully the board will waive privilege on those emails, because um, the attorney at the time was involved. So, you know, to say this, oh, it started, and this was retribution for what? If I supported Dr. Fagan, especially um, through the pandemic, um, through my time as president, I, I did not act any way unprofessionally towards her. 
Even once the other thing was hammered on me, but I still didn't change how I acted. Um, so to try to somehow bring this back to me is just lunacy. I'm sorry, there's no other word for it. And, and, and I find it very insulting that, that you would do that because there is not anywhere near to be true in this, in this universe. Um, so I'll, I'll stop because I, but I just, I just can't let that sit, that you, you would come back and try that her bad actions were somehow my fault. And that going back to June of 2023, when that first report came back and witness statements uh, corroborated the complaints, she could have taken action. And some of you other board members could have con counseled her to take action. She did not do that. Um, it was just double down, double down, double down, and here's where we are today. So um, I, I, I really take great umbrage in you even intimating in any way that this is somehow my fault, that I caused all this to happen. That's absolute nonsense. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Kirchhofer. Thanks, Madam President. The emails you're talking about, Mr. Scarfo, the three trustees on those emails, Am I one of those people on those on those emails? Which emails are you? The, the three that you're talking about. Uh, what I just said about, about getting the rotation. No, you no, you absolutely yeah, so, you were not. So I'm not one person on that on, on that email. Three no, you're other not. trustees, two that are up here. Uh, yes, they are, and one's no longer here. Yeah. And I want to just point a reference for everybody watching that's sitting here. All seven of us have read Robert Scarfo's sexual harassment. 147 pages. How anybody can sit up here and disparage you at this point, I don't understand, Martina. I don't understand it. After reading what we all read, I, I, you, you know, I, I don't. Mrs. Lamont Dixon, and then I would appreciate it. One of my friends called the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, I, uh, Mr. Scarfo, I am I'm not here saying that anyone's actions are due to your actions. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the district has looked very different since that moment. And Ms. Parker, I'll call the question. <laughs> I need a second. To call the question. Mrs. Mrs. Lamont Dixon, Dixon called the question, and I need a second. Second. Mr. Sitton seconds. All in favor of voting on this? Oh. Question. To call the question. Ready, ready to vote? <laughs> call the question. Discussion to be ended, and we're going to vote on the original motion. Okay, unanimous, thank goodness. All right. All those in favor? Please reread the motion. Please reread the motion. Okay, since this motion was first read by me <clears throat> quite a while ago, Madam President, I move to propose the mid-contract mid termination of the term contract of Superintendent Elizabeth Fagan for good cause and to authorize the acting superintendent, board designee, or Walsh Gallegos to deliver written notice to Dr. Fagan of this board action as required by law. I further move that the board designate and authorize trustee Ken Kirchhofer to work with Walsh Gallegos as discussed in closed meeting regarding the handling of the proposed termination of Dr. Fagan. And Karen, that was already um, seconded. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 4-3. Moving on to item five on our consent agenda. Item 5A, approval of the meeting minutes for the June 11th, 2024 board meeting. Consent, approval of the, item 5B, approval of the minutes for the June 21st, 2024 special board meeting. Pull. Okay, pull. Uh, item 5C, 
bond fund transfers and amendments. Consent. Item 5D, budgetary transfers and amendments. Consent. Item 5E, approval of goods, professional services, and non-construction services exceeding 50,000 in the aggregate or 25,000 individually. Pull. Cool. Uh, item 5F, 2024, construction and construction-related purchases. Item 5G, tax refunds. Item 5H, board author authorization of interlocal agreements. Consent. Item 5I, approval of RFP 2021-005-14, general merchandise. Consent. Item 5J of RFP 2022-101, miscellaneous instructional materials. Consent. Item 5K, approval of RFP 2023-102, services, repairs, maintenance, installation district-wide. Consent. Item 5L, approval of RFP 2024-104-52, books and publications. Consent. Item 5M, deductive change order. Consent. Item 5N, change order, multipurpose rooms, group three. Consent. Item 5O, 2024-2025, optional flexible day uh, program, OFSDP. Consent. Item 5P, resolution regarding wages and stack, staff contract days off for district closure. Consent. Item 5Q, committee appointments. Pull. Pull. Uh, Mr. Holmes, do I have a motion? Yes, Madam President. I move to approve consent agenda item 6A through 6Q, exclusive of 5A, 5E, and 5Q. In my notes, I had it 5B. Is it 5A or 5B that was pulled? Yeah, it's 5B. The, it's B. It's it's B. B. 5B. So it's, can, can you reread your motion? I'm sure, so yes, sorry. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I move to approve consent agenda items 6A through 6Q, exclusive of 5B, 5E, and 5Q. Can I get a second? Second. Mr. Scarfo seconds the. Can I correct? You're saying six, and I may have had six here. That should be fine. Do we want to? Let's correct that. Let's correct that. No, that's fine. No problem. I move to approve consent agenda items 5, 5A through 5Q, exclusive of 5B, 5E, and 5Q. And Mr. Mr. Scarfo, do you still second? Yes, ma'am. Okay, set, moved and seconded. Uh, do, is there any discussion? I guess it's consent, so no. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? In favor? 7-0, motion passes 7-0. Uh, Mr. Holmes, do I have a, a, a motion for item 5B? New system. Hold on, guys. And they're correct. We switched from board docs to a different diligent technology, and so we're having a learning day here, technology-wise. motion to approve the minutes for the June 21st, 2024 special board meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Yeah, Sitton? I, yeah, I pulled that because I was not here. So I need to vote no. Or uh, I need to abstain. Thank you kindly. Mm -hmm. Can I get a, can I please get a motion for item 5E? We're, we're oh. Vote. Oh yeah, sorry. 
Um, all those in favor? Opposed? One abstention. All right, can I get a motion for item 5E? 5E, motion to approve the CH listing of vendors and estimated annual costs for contract awards and renewals for the purchases of goods, professional services, and or non-construction services that are estimated to exceed $50,000 in the aggregate or $25,000 individually for the 2024-2025 fiscal year. Can I get a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, are you the one that pulled it, Mrs. I think we both said pull at the same time. Yeah. I don't mind going go first ahead. unless you want to go first. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Lamont Dixon. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Um, my question is really about Ahuja and Clark for accounting audit services for the $40,000. I'm just curious on why that's listed here. And, and before we answer, I guess the question I have, Mr. Beatty, um, is how much have we already paid Ahuja and Clark to do like outside auditing? Because I feel like we've paid them quite a bit. So then I'm wondering why they're listed here as an annual cost of 40000 Um, the I would have to look at the exact amount we pulled uh, or that we paid in uh, the last last fiscal year. Um, this is the um, the recommendation for the the new year. So I I don't know off the top of my head how much we paid in the prior fiscal year, but this would be for the fiscal year just started in on seven one. Okay, so is this type of line, and I'm sorry for not asking in advance of the meeting, but is this line item as a vendor, um, is that typical or is this something that's new as a line item? I, I just don't remember seeing them until they actually did an audit for us recently. Um. Are, <laughs> mm. So and, let, me, it, let me jump in here, Mr. Beatty. So it was requested that we have an item on here for this firm in case the audit committee chooses to do anything further. Not that they will, but should they? And they wanted to use them. So we had a amount in there for this firm if we chose to use them, this, this audit firm. Mr. Kurt, are you done? Well, well um, so we're talking about the new audit committee or the old audit committee? Because technically, I'm on the audit committee, but I did not know about the 40000 And the new audit committee wouldn't know that they're on the audit committee, I don't think, at this point. Maybe Mr. Scarfo would, but no one else. So I'm just curious Why on how... Else? Because you're part of the committee decision-making team. We're on the committee together. Well, so you I would know, yes, but, not but I'm just saying the other members wouldn't know that they're even on the audit committee. Right because it's announced today. So I'm, I'm just asking. This, this gives the new, even the new audit committee the flexibility, should they choose to do more work with this audit firm, they can. They don't have to, but it's there if they choose to. Okay, so you brought it, Dr. Brown, Excuse to be me. on, you brought it to the agenda. I'm just trying to understand where it came from. I was asked to bring it to the agenda. By a board member? Correct. So is, was it asked to be put on the agenda by the old committee board members? Because I'm on the committee, I'm asking, because we've never discussed this. Can I recognize the person who might know? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kirchhofer, I think you're the current uh, chair. Thank you for the question. That is a fair question. And let me try to answer it completely without interfering with any investigative work. You have appointed me the chair of the audit committee. That's a big job and I take it very seriously. I see my role as the first gatekeeper for this elected board of trustees to ensure that our tax dollars, community, your tax dollars are used 100% properly all of the time. If allegations are brought to me, or really any of us, it is not my job to investigate them one way or the other. It is my job to ensure that the full and complete information is reviewed and investigated so that we as Board of Trustees can ensure again that the taxpayer's money is under 100% appropriately all of the time. We have a new internal auditor coming in. 
That internal auditor needs a fully clean slate. It is our job to set that individual up to do his or her job with all the information and tools that he or she needs and to put them in a position to know everything. So I cannot publicly share any specific allegation. I can share that I will always fight to have any allegation of any mishandling or misappropriation fully investigated. That's what I did when we originally hired the external forensic reviewer on separate allegations. And it is what I will always do as the chair of this board's audit committee. I know each of you would do the same in the interest of our community. It is my intent that full in information be brought forward to this entire board and the community as any investigation now or in the future in the district funds is completed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sitton hasn't spoken yet. Um, just, uh, I, I don't remember. That's why I'm going to ask the question. Did we approve, and however you pronounce the name, um, did we approve them with a, with a public vote to do the um, forensic audit? Because I can remember us talking, I'm going to be careful because I don't want to break uh, Open Meetings Act. We talked about a different firm to do the forensic audit, and then this firm showed up. And I don't, I just don't remember if we actually voted to approve this, this, uh, this firm to do the forensic audit. Uh, that's my question. Mr. Kirchhofer? We spoke and closed, and y'all put me in charge, and I'm the audit chair committee, right? Committee chair. And I talked to council, and we wanted to use somebody outside of the district that had no ties. So it's clean, as we've seen, uh, what we need here, and uh, that nobody had any prior relationships with anybody in this district, and that's what we did. And I worked with Billy and his team, and. Um, with the audit committee that Martina was part of, and um, uh, who else, M Mike Grabowski, and that's who we used. So we didn't insert, we didn't jump, we didn't do anything. Just because you made a recommendation, you might have, somebody made, that's not who we used. We used somebody that had no relationship with the district. So that's what we did. Mr. Sitton. My question was, did we, formally vote in public to hire this firm to do that audit? That, that's my question. No. Mr. Scarfo? Yeah, we did, and we approved the amount of money, and we did a second, um, there was a second motion when we increased the amount, that we, the up to amount to, to pay them. I, I can't remember the month off the top of my head. We can go back and look at minutes from those various, various months. Um, but I, I know that was there. That was my recollection as well. But we were happy to go back and pull the minutes. Yeah, because I, I would like to. I'd like to know that uh, because there seems to be some discrepancy in, in what people are remembering and not. And then also, because uh, my question is: is this is this forty thousand dollars for work that's already been performed, uh, or is it for future work that we put ourselves into now that? Our, our internal auditor after 19 years has resigned to take another position at a, at a neighboring firm, I mean neighboring school district. So I'm just, I'm just I want to know if we've approved them in the past, did we, or is this money for work they've already done, or is this for anticipated work in the future? So that's, that's, Mr. What I, that's like what I'd like to hear. Yeah, not work done, anticipated, but the information we brought to the, the audit committee and then brought back to the full board, and you may vote then, do we, continue, do we continue, do we do it, once you have the information. I don't even have all the information. That's why we're, we're doing this. And we have allegations that need to be looked into. I think Mrs. Lamont Dixon had her hand up first. Oh. There's so many different avenues now. Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, I wanted to say, okay, the first statement that you made, Mr. Kirchhofer, 
I agree wholeheartedly. I want things to be thorough, transparent, clear. I agree wholeheartedly. But the way our board is structured when we work in committee, just because a person is the chair does not mean they technically can make a decision without the rest of the committee. So Mr. Grabowski and I are on that committee and we never talked about this. So for, for the chair to just call the interim superintendent to say to put this on an agenda, in my opinion, is not the way we do business. I mean, we typically, there's a lot of people on the committee and I just says three. So typically that committee would have had this conversation and then it would be put on the agenda by you calling, not no. for us to be surprised here today when we're on the committee. Well, what I would say is you have the opportunity to vote on it right now. Yeah, but I'm just saying, that's not how we do business around here, but I guess it's the new way. <laughs> Mr. Sitton. And uh, well, and, and kind of going along with conversations that happened before one of the multiple uh, recesses about information. Um, I know we can't talk about it right now in public, but, but you mentioned several al allegations that need to be looked at. I have no clue what you're talking about. I have no clue what he's talking about no, either. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, but we're putting it out there to the public. There's allegations that need to be investigated, and, and we're voting on someone to, to potentially do that, and we don't even know what the allegations are. We haven't discussed any of it. We don't. And so now we're going to vote for someone to potentially investigate something that no one knows anything about except apparently you. I'm Mrs. Lamont Dixon. And I just want to state that as a committee member, I don't know anything about it either. I brought, I brought it to council. Mr. Mr. Kirchhofer, sorry, you yeah. are recognized. I brought it to council, talked to council about it, and, and uh, talked to Dr. Brown, and here it is. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not smart enough to be an attorney. I brought it to them. That's accurate. Mr. Kirchhofer contacted me and informed me that allegations had come to his attention. I don't really know what they are either, but they involve finances and that he wanted them investigated. He believed all the board members would want any allegation investigated. I heard you say that this evening. And so he asked if an agenda item is appropriate to have a firm investigate allegations, and I told him that it was, um, and it got on the agenda. Ms. Lamont Dixon. So correct me if I'm wrong then. So a board member, I can call you and say, I have an issue with X, and ask you if I can put it on the agenda. I can bypass the president and the rest of the board, and I can call Dr. Brown after we talk and put something on the agenda. I don't know if he bypassed the president. I know that he called me and asked me okay. about the legal appropriateness of it. I know that he told me he was going to inform the superintendent, acting superintendent, of his intention, and I assume um, that he went through the process that board members go through. I don't know what yeah. your specific process is to get something on the agenda. And I did. I, mean, I talked to President you recognize, Parker. You recognize yeah. Mr. I, I talked to you, talked to President Parker, and I talked to Dr. Brown. And I went through all the proper protocol, and I'll leave it at that. I mean, that's, I'm a committee chair of the audit. I mean, I'm the audit chair. All right. All right. Just a matter of clarification. Mr. I'm, Sitton. I'm sorry. Matter of clarification, though. If I want to put something on the agenda, I go to you. If you have not spoken to two other people about it and are breaking the Open Meetings Act, right? No, I'm, I'm going to you to say I'd like to put this on, on an agenda. Fair. Okay. I don't go to Dr. Brown and tell him to put it on the agenda. I don't even talk to Dr. Brown about it. I talk to you, and you talk to Dr. Brown about it. I that's did, protocol. I talked to Dr. Brown. No, that, that's why I'm just clarifying protocol. But I did refer Dr. Brown back to Ken because I didn't know what the allegations, I still don't know what the what it is, so. Wow. And 
Wow. So we've got something on the agenda to investigate allegations that only one person knows about. It's m just money that might be used, <laughs> maybe, by the committee. Okay. It's the opportunity to use funds right. if needed. And if the committee determines it's not needed, we it's it. not, then we don't do it. All right, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries four, three. Mr. Holmes, can I get a motion on a item five Q? Motion to approve the following committees and assignments for the 2024-2025 school year. Can I get a second? Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. I will speak first. The past few school years, the school board has had five committees, audit, advocacy, building and planning, finance, and board and superintendent evaluation committee. The board committees vary through the years based on the district's current needs. We are making a few updates to the new school year. For the 2024-2025 school year, all seven trustees will serve on the superintendent evaluation committee. In another update, we are adding two committees, safety, which is of the utmost importance to all of us here in Umbel ISD, and technology. Safety is the district's number one priority. Having a safety committee will allow the school board to remain updated on all initiatives. Technology, and especially AI, are changing the world. We want a technology committee to support cybersecurity and other proactive measures. We've had a, a technology committee in the past. Some trustees will be serving on committees that they have not served on before. Almost all committees will have a new chair in the new school year. This is to promote a secession planning and to ensure that trustees gain experience throughout their term serving on the various committees. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sitton? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, and not that I don't think that safety and technology are important, I think they are. Uh, but board policy says the board may establish standing committees annually after the election of officers. Not one person, not a committee of three, but so I don't remember the board talking about adding additional committees. We are right now. It's, it's already, do I still have the floor? Yes. So we, we're talking about it now, but y'all, you've already added them and added committee members to it. So we're not doing what policy says. And so after the, the committees are established, um, then you're, the committee of three get together and, and decide as a committee of three who goes to what. Uh, so I'm not sure if y'all actually sat down together and talked about things like that, because you mentioned succession planning. Um, you know, historically, um, number one, again, as I mentioned, we didn't follow protocol by adding more committees, but that's okay. Uh, the number two, um, I find it odd that if you're talking about succession planning, Marcus Holmes has served on building and planning for several years, and the succession planning would make sense having him chair instead of someone that's just been on the committee one year. So I don't understand that part of it. Uh, historically, we've also tried to make sure every board member chairs at least one committee. I don't think that's happened. Uh, unless there are liaison position like with the Education Foundation or, or some other community organization. Um, so, personally, I've got 10 months left. 
I knew I was going to be removed from all this stuff. I knew it. So I, I'm not blindsided by it. Um, I've served on the board for 13 and a half years. I have a degree in finance. I've served in multiple capacities in building and planning. Um, I really brought Marcus on knowing I was not going to run for re-election three years ago. Mm -hmm. And it would make sense having him step in because of his knowledge and history that we've gone through. Uh, so I really view the committee assignments as a total slap in my face and a total retaliation by a couple of my colleagues. But again, I'm a big boy. I'm on my way out. That's fine. Mr. Scarfo? Yeah, uh, Mr. Parker, I, I believe the board operating procedures allows the board president to not only create standing committees, but ad hoc committees as they feel is necessary. So I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what they allow. Mr. Rush or Ms. Balding, can you please clarify? Going to put it between us and see how it goes. So, um, Mr. Sitton is reading the board policy correctly. That is BDB uh, local for internal committees. Your board operating procedures do say that the um, committee assignments and committees themselves are at the discretion of the board president, um, which is why they are slated the way they are on the agenda to approve committees. That is the board approving the committees and the committee assignments at the discretion of the board president. It's just on one slate as a board agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Rush. Mr. Sitton. So once again, Umbelasti Board of Trustees operating procedures does not match up with board policy because operating procedures say the board established them, not the board president. The policy supersedes. I understand that. So let's not cherry pick what we're going to fix and what we're going to clean up. Let's make sure all of our operating procedures and policies match. I agree. Mr. Scarfo? Uh, Ms. Ms. Lamont Dixon had her hand up first. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Mrs. Okay. Lamont Dixon? So, so Mr. Rush or Ms. Spaulding, um, so to clarify, do we need a motion to put the committees in place and then a separate motion? No, I don't think so. And um, I did, I had to do a little bit of digging through your board agendas to figure out historically how this worked. And I actually modeled this when I recommended the agenda language. I've modeled it after previous years where it was done this way. Here are the, it, that's what it said on the agenda at least. It was, here are the titles, here are the people. It was one slate motion. No, I, I agree with that. But I'm talking about the new committees. I, I think it's the same. The same? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just I clarifying. Think, I think. I had to add a committee to HCAD, and we had to actually have an action item to vote for the committee and then approve that before I could appoint people to the committee. So I'm just clarifying. Yeah, I don't think there's a legal distinction there. It's okay. one motion can handle both or you could separate them out, but ultimately it's the same thing. It's just about is the public aware of what is being voted on is the important thing. Thank you. Yes. And the, all these questions were asked prior to this moment. And, um, and interestingly, Karen found that sometimes they were in the consent agenda. Sometimes this item was in consent. Sometimes it was in action. Sometimes it was in action from, clo from uh, closed session. So it was just interesting. But I think we're, does, does anybody have any further discussion? Yeah. Mr. Holmes? No, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just gonna say to the cherry picking comment, um, I tried on more than one occasion while I chaired the board last year to get resolution to a couple of these things and I kept getting shouted down. So, um, you know, uh, you get what you want, you know? So anyway, uh, it's something that needs to be uh, corrected. Um, but like I said, uh, the operating procedures do allow the president to do, to create committees ad hoc or standing. Um, and if we need to fix that with the policy, then we need to do that. Just like we do on those other ones that are still hanging out there. They're like the old hanging chads. So. Um, we need to get it corrected. Um, and like I said, I tried on more than one occasion last year. So 
Thank you. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Um, one, want to say honored to serve on any committee, right? I'm here at the uh, pleasure of the community. But I, I was wondering in terms of what Mr. Scarfo had mentioned, right? I've been on building and planning since my inception on being on the board, which is now going on three years. And from what I've gathered and just talking in terms of the history of how it works, I was just wondering um, as well. And again, I'm not picking up my marbles and gonna take them home just because I'm not, I'm here again to serve. But I was just wondering if I could get clarification on um, that decision and the logic behind it. Well, the decision was made. And, and a lot, I, you know, when I've had my committee assignments, it's, there's, it's sometimes you get what you want, sometimes you don't. And does anybody have anything further? I'm sorry. Mrs. Yes, Lamont Dixon. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, Mr. Holmes, um, I, I, I did stand up for that. I felt that you have deserved the right after your tenure on building and planning to be the chair of that committee. Um, but it, it takes three people to make the decisions. Um, so we, we did work back and forth on a lot of different areas. So I'm not sure. saying it wasn't workable, but that was one of the, the the sources of contention for me personally, um, but you know, essentially, I was outvoted. So, okay. and I was relatively neutral on that on that one. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes five two. Oh, see again? So four opposed. Opposed. Who's opposed? Thank you. Moving on to item 6A, ratification of, appro in, of approval of the consent agenda. Oh, just kidding. Um, Item 6B, Policy Revisions, TASB Update 123, and Administrative Recommendations, Final Action. Mr. Holmes, do I have a motion? Motion to adopt and approve the board policy revisions as listed. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Do you, oh, any discussion? Yeah. Madam President. Do, Mr. Do, Scarfo? Just really quick. I, we don't have to belabor it here, but I've, I've went through all these policies, and I, I believe, and I'm going to share it with you, that you can share with the board, um, my comments, because I think some of these policies, um, even the, um, the student uh, handbook, code of conduct, I think some of these things need to go uh, to either technology committee, to safety committee, because I think they need, we need to do a little bit deeper dive on some of them. It's fine for now. But I just have some concerns of what we're not doing, and I'd like to present those to you, and uh, then you could pass them on uh, to the board. And I really would like to see that those new committees, that um, founded committee too, on the uh, you know with safety and technology, that they look a little deeper into because I think there's some some conflicts or some things where they're not going far enough on local policy, and that's all I wanted to just bring to your attention. You asked me to do it, and I, I did. Thank you. Any further, any further discussion? All those in favor? Item passes 7-0. Item 6C, 2024-2025, Student Code of Conduct. Mr. Holmes, do I have a motion? Yes, Madam President. Motion to approve the 2024-2025 Student Code of Conduct. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Sitton. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Madam President, can I ask a, a, a question on, there is an item 6A, ratification of approval of consent agenda items 5A and 5B 
from the June twenty first board meeting. Uh, we yes. Okay, so item. 6A, ratification of approval of the consent agenda items 5A and 5B from the June 21st, 2024 board meeting. Do I have a motion, Mr. Holmes? Yes, motion to ratify the intended approval of consent agenda items 5A and 5B from the June 21st, 2024 board meeting. Do you have a second? Second. Mr. Scarfo seconds. Uh, any discussion? Yes, yeah, since I wasn't there, what, what were these two items? There's no, there's no information. Uh, it would be on the uh, on the minutes from the June twenty first, which which are attached to this agenda. Okay, so no, since we're it's open for discussion, no one can just give me the cliff notes of it real quick. Doctor Brown, <laughs> Miss Martin. <laughs> Oh, again, the consent agenda items uh, were A, budgetary transfers and amendments, motion to approve the listing of budgetary transfers, including an increase in the budget for legal fees and functional category transfers for year and needs. And the second item was Oh, there it is. Um, goods, professional services, and non-construction services exceeding 50,000 in the aggregate or 25,000 individually. Motion to approve the CH listing of vendors and estimated annual costs for contract awards and renewals for the purchase of goods, professional services, and or non-construction services that are estimated to exceed 50,000 in the aggregate or 25,000 individually. Were these items tabled or? They were. They were, they were passed, but there was not a second ever given. There was okay. a motion and a vote. Okay, that's and what I read. No so I did, I, okay, I read that. I think Marcus, Mr. Holmes made a motion and then it died. Correct. Correct. Okay, so, I, then, so I, that's what I read. Okay, I just Martin didn't know. I caught that later in that when she's putting her minutes together, like, uh, who did the second? Well, we couldn't find that. So. It was all discussed and passed, but we just didn't have a second, so we need to clean that up. Okay, and so 5A, though, was increasing our, <laughs> our legal fees budget? 5A was budgetary transfers and amendments, and it was a motion to approve the listing of budgetary transfers, including an increase in the budget for legal fees and okay, that, functional that's, category transfers. Right, so I don't think it was the only one. <laughs> Mrs. Lamont Dixon. So they shouldn't be separate? Like, I just feel like... They weren't separate on the consent agenda in June. I there thought was it was A and B, separate, two separate items on the consent agenda? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes, that's right. You guys separate them out. You get consent for each one. There just right. wasn't a second. So you can take them together or you can take them separately. You can have two motions on this one agenda if you want it that way. Okay. I mean, because one I would vote for and one I would not. So that's why I'm asking. So you can amend the motion. Yeah, amend the motion. You can sp split the motion. Yes. So I move that we ratify the approval of consent agenda item 5A from the June 21st, 2024 board meeting. Do I have a second? That's your amendment. I'm amending, okay. yes. Okay. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the amended motion? All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, uh, back to the original motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I appreciate it very okay. much. Our next item is item 7A, Portrait of a Graduate, Survey Results. Uh, 
Any questions from the board regarding this item? Anyone? Item 7B, Intruder Detection Audit Report. Mr. Perkins? We have no report tonight. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Item 7C, Updates from our Board Associations and Committees. Would anybody like to present a report? Ms. Parker. Oh, Mrs. Lamont Dixon. Um, I don't have a report, but I have a question for the Building and Planning Committee. Mm. <laughs> Is that appropriate to ask a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, a question to the committee. I think this is just updates from the committee. I don't think this is questions for the committee. No, not deliberate. I just wanted to ask the status of a project. We can't. I don't think that's that. appropriate at this time. I think that the, the most okay. appropriate status would be or go to the superintendent and ask him, acting superintendent. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Item 7D, financial services report. Any questions from the board regarding this item? Item 7E, 2024-2025, Parent Student Handbook. Any questions from the board regarding this item? Every, uh, are there any, uh, uh, moving to our closing items, is, are there any topics for future board business? Mr. Grabowski? Yes, Madam President, I would like to put on the very next agenda, if we could, a discussion, uh, an action item. Uh, is that the agenda be posted one week or seven days prior to the meeting? Give us more time to do our due diligence. Posted publicly or to the board? Posted. Posted to the community as well. Posted to the community as well? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there any, any interest in this item? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Lamont Dixon? Um, at the last board meeting for new board business, I requested um, a board update in closed session about um, the issues that Mr. Ford has brought to us, and it did go through with consensus. I just wanted to remind yes, and Madam President that I would like to do that. I mean, I know we have a technology committee, but specifically an update on Schoology. Yes, and, and the only reason that didn't happen was because the, everybody was busy bringing everything back up online from Burl, and so we definitely will have that report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sitton? Yes, Madam President, thank you. Uh, I've sent numerous emails uh, requesting a full accounting of our legal expenses. Specifically, uh, since May, 20, May of 2023, who was paid, how they were paid, and what case they were assigned to. Uh, this should also include uh, payment uh, found under legal's budget, not just the board's budget, since we no longer have legal counsel and we've been using outside counsel uh, for our board meetings since, I believe, October. So I think that every member of the board would wanna know how much money we've actually spent, where it's gone, and to what complaint or case it went to. Um, and, and I mean, I don't, I, I, think, I don't think that can be made public initially because of all the conflicts and all that stuff with the AG and all that stuff. But I think that, that each of the board members should have a full accounting of where the taxpayer money has gone. And I have requested this multiple times from board colleagues, from attorneys, and I have gotten zero response from anybody, zero. And as one of seven that's responsible for this, I would think someone would just say, Mr. Sitton, shut up, we're not gonna tell you, or they would, Give me the information. So I want this on the next board agenda if we have to do it in closed session or whatever, but I want an accounting of all the money we've spent on legal and for what complaint, what case it went towards and who got paid, how they got paid. 
pull the board on that? I'm fine with it. Me too. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, we'll get it on there. Anybody else? No. Bless you. Um, all right, with that, the time is now 10.33 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>